If you don't have your Bible with you, please look up to the screens. This is not merely just a book, but we believe that it is God and his words. So let us listen attentively. It says, For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered. So will I seek out my sheep and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the uh, ravens and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and all the mountains, heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind them up injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, behold, I judge between the sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture that you must tread down with your feet on the rest of, the pasture, rest of your pasture and to drink to clear water that you must muddy the rest of the water with your feet? And must my sheep eat what you have trodden with your feet? and drink what you have muddied with your feet? Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself, will judge between the fat sheep and lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder, and thrust at all the weak with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad. abroad. I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord, I have spoken. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God, amen. Let's uh, pray so that God will enlighten us through his spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time as we worship you. Every part of this worship would not be able, would not be possible without you making it happen. We have just heard that some part of Asia, some part of the world, they don't have the freedom to worship, but we do. And we have this freedom not because of our own uh, validity, but Father God, because you have called us and you have brought us here, we have just read your word. Let us now listen carefully with your spirit truly explaining and telling us who Jesus is and who you are, that with our hearts open, that we, we would accept you. Through your spirit, we pray. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we go into the book of Ezekiel, uh, if you have never heard of who Ezekiel is, or if you've never read the book of Ezekiel, he is an interesting character. Uh, let me tell you something about what God is teaching us uh, through the book, and also some of the other books of the Old Testament, uh, and, and the history of the Israelites. Uh, now picture with me a moment. Uh, of the Israelites' history uh, from the time Moses uh, to current day of Ezekiel. When Moses took the Israelites out of uh, 
the land of Egypt to go to the promised land, which is Canaan, it took them 40 years in the desert. Think about that 40 years. Um, most of you are not even 30. Uh, some of you are a little over 40. But think about the 40 years. They were in the desert wandering. But if you think about the t distance between e Egypt to Canaan, they say it is only 11 days worth of walk. So let's explore why they, it took 40 years. Exodus 17.3 says, So the people thirsted there for water, and the people grumbled against Moses, Moses and said, Why did you bring us out, out of Egypt to kill us and our children, our livestock, with thirst? And then the famous Exodus 32.4, where the Israelites couldn't wait for Moses to come down from the mountain with Ten Commandments. And it says, he, talking about Aaron, received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with graving uh, tool and made a golden calf. And they said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of land of Egypt. Now, if you go further into uh, other books, such as Judges, the same people in the book of Judges worship idols like Baal and Ashereth. So God hands Israelites to their enemies in the, uh, in the land of Canaan. But God saves them from the enemies by giving them judges because people cried out to God. Such as Samson. Um, most of you probably know who Samson is, the guy who uh, was very strong and uh, who died uh, in the hands of the enemies. So if you look at the people of Israelites, they weren't perfect. They were sinful. And the people who tried to lead uh, the Israelites were also not perfect, and they were sinful. So the last verse of, book, um, of Judges, it says, In those days there were no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes. What a travesty to God's people who he has over and over called them to obey him and listen to his voice. Let's go on to Samuel. It says, 1 Samuel 8, 5, the same Israelites complained again by saying, Behold, you Samuel are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint us a king to judge us like all the nations. When the whole book of Judges was about that, people still complained to God, saying that we need now a king, not judges. So as we go on, uh, it says uh, God gave Israelites kings, such as Saul, such as David, and such as Solomon. And the complaining and disobeying continued among Israelites. After the, king, uh, after the reign of King David and his son Solomon, Israelites split into two kingdoms. The northern kingdom, which was composed of ten, ten tribes out of twelve, uh, was called the kingdom of Israel. The southern kingdom was composed of two tribes, and it was known as kingdom of Judah. Guess what? Kings of both kingdoms didn't do much better than the, the judges before them when they were leading their countries. The leaders of the entire nation was in shambles, trying to please themselves and make idols of foreign gods, with, uh, which displeased the God of Israel. It was so bad that the 20 kingdoms, uh, or 20 kings in the kingdom of Israel, and 20 kings in the kingdom of Judah, most of them, if you look at the Bible, they were called either bad, perverted, devilish, uh, heinous, treacherous, and most of them did evil in the eyes of the Lord. They were so bad that if you look at 2 Kings 23, 27, it says, And the Lord said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight as I have removed Israel, and I will cast off the city that I have chosen, Jerusalem, and the house of which I said, My name shall be there. Our God who keeps his promise did just that. He cast it out, um, Judah, and he ca casted out the kingdom of Israel. 
So the first major exile, both countries were Assyrians, which was a powerful kingdom back then that demolished most of the countries around、uh, Israel, which began in、uh, 17, or 722 BC. Assyria forced the ten northern tribes of Israel into exile in Assyria. They brought all these Israelites into their country to make them slaves to work the land. These ten tribes of Israel are sometimes called the Lost Tribes, because they became assimilated and never returned to their homeland in an organized way. If you look at our country as well, a lot of us feel like we're assimilated to the modern culture, which is true. Some of us. Look at our phones and look at our computers, and you know, get assimilated to the things of this culture. Then a greater exile, which happened to Judah,、uh, with Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, carried away all Jerusalem and all the princes of Jerusalem, and all the mighty mighty men of, of valor, which with ten、uh, thousand captives. All into Babylon.、Uh, it says、uh, in Second King 24, all the craftsmen and the smith, none remained except the poorest sort of the people of the land. If you think about that, most of you who are sitting here probably moved into U.S.、Uh, by your own will, maybe because you thought that something was good, something was、uh, valuable. Uh, maybe your parents thought that, so you're now here. But unlike、um, us, Israel and Kingdom of Judah, they disobeyed God so much that God put them into that situation. So here comes Ezekiel. In our text today, a priest was one of the people ex- exiled to Babylonia. And he was part of t- the ten thousand people who got ex- exiled to Babylon. Five years later, Yahweh, our God, called Ezekiel to be a prophet, pro- prophesying both doom for the city of Jerusalem and hope for the Israelites, saying that God will、um, take them back to the country. With this history lesson, I want to lay out three things that we can learn from the Israelites. Number one. Israel has a pattern of idolatry, and they had they as a nation were prone to wander.、Uh, Jeremiah second twenty five says, "Do not run until your shoes wear out, or until your mouth is dry." But you, Israel, said, "It is of no use, for I love strange gods, and I will go after them." This is what the entire country of Israel were saying. I love strange gods, and I will go after them, straight to the face of God. Then you look at Second Kings seventeen. It says, Israelites were fearing other gods, burning incense, making sacred pillars of every green tree. I'm sure we don't use those exact words in our lives, but doesn't our heart really long for something like a strange gods? Or go after them in our daily lives, maybe money, maybe power, maybe status. I know that most of us、uh, either are going to some college around here or seeking to get married.、Uh, whatever stage you guys are are in, maybe a better job, whatever it is. If you make that higher than, or more powerful than, or more important than God Himself. I think that's what is talking about. Israelites also couldn't turn to God on their own power, even though if they wanted to, they couldn't turn. Look at Jeremiah two twenty. It says, "God tells His people, 'Long ago, I broke the load from your neck and tore off your chains, but you said, 'I will not serve.' For on every high hill and under every green tree." You have lain down a woman, who sells、uh, the use of their body. What a defiant people they are! But our God tells them this in the next verse. Yet, I planted you as a vine of much worth. 
in every way a true seed. How then have you turned away from me and become a wild vine? Church, as you can see, we have to recognize that without God breaking us out of our chain and planting us as a vine in him, we can't come to him. I hope you understand that this worship is not a convenient meeting, gathering together because we have some uh, similar backgrounds or similar uh, likings, but God has planted you in your own lives, growing and, and working, that makes you come to this worship and, and see God working in our lives, just like he has told the Israelites. Number two of the lesson is, second point, is that God will feed his sheep who hears his voice. On our next text, God promises that he himself will search for his sheep and seek them out. Ezekiel tells this to the kingdom of Judah on verse 11. It says, For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. This shows that our God is a tender and caring shepherd who understands the sheep's vulnerability and provides for their needs. But he also says that he will cast away those who don't belong to him. What does that mean? So some sheep belong to God and some don't. Even though we gather together to worship the same God, he tells us, that it is clear that some of you don't belong to me. I wish that our church could recognize that it is important why they're here, to know the true God and know the true uh, meaning of knowing what um, the gospel means. If you do not understand and if you don't accept it, you have to understand that you are not part of his flock. Verse 16 says, And the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. This represents those in power positions. Those who had the responsibilities for seeing that the flock were fed, but instead fed themselves and failed to be good shepherds. If you, uh, let's go on to the third point, which is, as we look at the third point, I would like to look into how God has been working in the lives of the Israelites. Look at the verse 11. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. This God, who is almighty and powerful, who has brought them out of Egypt to bring Moses to the holy ground up to the mountain, through the desert to the promised land of Canaan, only wanted to have his people know that he is their Lord. In the book of Ezekiel, there are 60 times where God says, know that I am your God. Know that I am the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. To his people, Israelites, this is what God says. He gently calls them out of the wilderness where they have been scattered. He says in verse 12, I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. Verse 13 says, I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the uh, ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. Church, this is how God loves his people, where he wants to be the shepherd that loves and cares for his flock. When God tells Ezekiel this message on verses 23 and 24, where it says, I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed, feed them. He shall uh, feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. We could see that God is remembering his covenant promise to King David. If you look at 2 Samuel, it says, And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. 
the kings of Israel and Judah, the descendants of David, failed to serve God faithfully. But God has not forgotten his covenant with David. Who will this shepherd be then? David? Yes. But what about current days? What about now? We could definitely see that this verse is a messianic promise to raise up the Messiah from the house of David to shepherd his people. If you look at the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 1, it says, The book of genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Jesus, in the genealogy of David, this is the messianic promise that God has made to David. This is our Lord Jesus Christ, who has been next to God from the beginning of creation. He is the one David sings about in Psalm 23, which says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in path of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will not fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You, pre you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely the goodness of, and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Brothers and sisters, I present to you Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is willing to be jealous for our sake, who is willing to seek out the lost sheep, leaving all the glory of being God himself behind. In the dirtiness of this sinful world, to save a wretched sinners like us. He is still calling his sheep with a gentle voice today by saying, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own knows me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I, I lay down my sheep, uh, life for the sheep. Would you listen to his voice today if you do not know him, and if you did not accept him as your Lord and Savior, and believe the good shepherd his name is Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this time to learn about Jesus. Learn how he has been with God even from the beginning. He is God and he is fully human. And yet, Father God, you have come down to this earth leaving behind all the glory. And you have died for and resurrected for us who you love deeply, all for the glory of God. And I pray, Father God, today as we listen to the message that you would open our hearts to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior into our lives, into our hearts, as we proclaim Jesus King of kings and Lord of lords. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.